Let's speak on, um, you know, Zambia's tax policy regime. I know this is uh, an area that uh, requires critical attention, and uh, it also uh, was one of uh, the MOUs that was, so, well, not the tax policy regime, but what was signed was the mutual administrative assistance between uh, the Rwanda, Rwanda Revenue Authority and the Zambia Revenue Authority meant to cooperate in uh, a joint effort to curb the uh, contravention of tax laws. Do you think that... Uh, this being done could uh, assist in uh, Zambia's tax policy re regime? Yes, and I'm, I'm also glad that uh, the two countries uh, were thinking along what is happening at a global level. Uh, what has been happening at a global level for a very long time is that uh, uh, people have found very clever ways of uh, uh, evading uh, tax responsibilities. Mm. You find that someone opens a bank account in another country so that uh, when uh, they are paid for goods and services, those monies are paid into that account so that they are unable to pay tax in their own country. So now what is happening is that uh, even if you are seated here and you want to open an account either in Zimbabwe or South Africa and things like that, they are going to ask for your tax uh, PIN identification number. And the reason for that is that they want to share that with uh, authorities where you live so that you are not uh, misusing the globalization of uh, the financial system in order to benefit yourself and then uh, uh, undermine your country's uh, ability to uh, you know, raise taxes. Uh, so it is important that this is signed between Zambia and, uh, and Rwanda because uh, uh, one, to, to address that issue, mm -hmm. but also for purposes of, um, a, you know, if I've paid tax on goods that I'm going to sell, in, uh, in, uh, in, Zim uh, in, in Rwanda, or you know, someone in Rwanda has already paid tax on that, you must be able to ensure that somebody is not uh, you know, taxed twice. Uh, so uh, the issue of tax as part of economic diplomacy is huge around the world, and Zambians must understand it in that context. Uh, still on the issue of Zambia's uh, economic diplomacy, we still ha we've seen the president uh, having to visit different uh, countries, especially within the southern region, and uh, his goal, obviously, is to create that uh, diplomatic relation and uh, possibly uh, pave way for Zambia's uh, economy to be open uh, to southern Africa and the rest of the world. But uh, overall, speaking on what is currently happening and uh, the state of uh, Zambia's e economy, eight months after the UPND form government, many seem to have lost confidence, especially when we speak on some of the promises that the UPND government um, made. And this was on the economic reforms that will be implemented. And eight months down the line, it still seems it's a difficult path, not only for the government, but even for the Zambian people. With all these uh, doors that are being opened, all these doors that are being created by the president himself, do you think that the next few months will be better for Zambia? Well, see, um Ideally, ideally, you'd like to believe that uh, uh, these interactions should be able to translate into, uh, a, um, into a relief for Zambians in bringing resources or contributing to the expansion of the economy. Uh, but you need to understand that um, life doesn't work in a straight path. Um, the, sometimes it doesn't matter you know, how much you are focused on a particular ideal, and it doesn't matter how you have articulated your public policy, and it doesn't matter how clear you might be, there will always be uh, developments uh, along the way that will be able to uh, make it difficult for you to realize what you want. For instance, who knew that there's going to be a war um, in Ukraine, mm. a war that is going to have, uh, you know, uh, this kind of ripple effects across the world? That is why in public policy we have a model uh, known as a punctuated equilibrium model or eco the punctuated equilibrium th theory that uh, tends to explain those developments that you did not expect happening. Um, so, yes, ideally, um, these kinds of interactions are laying a foundation. Uh, for the kind of interactions that should uh, bring these kinds of resources that we need for purposes of uh, growing the Zambian economy, uh, one can only hope and trust that uh, uh, first the leadership um, uh, in government as well as the civil service will put their minds to this uh, by ensuring that uh, they are able to identify you know, various stakeholders. This is what we sometimes call in diplomacy, stakeholder diplomacy. There is nothing that you as a government can decide that is going to come to fruition without identifying other stakeholders. Whatever movement the president makes in the region, it can all be actualized 
if the civil service, the public, the political leadership has identified appropriately who the stakeholders are that they are going to work with. But it's also important that, uh, you know, the media and parliament, they bring pressure to bear on government to make sure that uh, all these trips that are being made, that they are able to show value for money. Mm. But we're not asking these critical questions. Even after these MOUs have been signed, um, after the president of Rwanda has left, this might be the end. And there's going to be another story. And yet, if we are able to archive this and be able to uh, you know, draw up a plan where we are going to monitor the uh, actualization of this, we'll be able to then to uh, realize benefits from each and every trip that the president makes. As we get to conclude our conversation uh, here and speaking on the issue of uh, Zambia's economic status, we, we know that one of the things that uh, will constantly uh, have us go towards a downtrend is corruption in, in, in the country. And then the, in the years before, we have seen how corruption has affected Zambia's uh, economic status. And one of the things that the European government has been open about is how they would like to be transparent in the fight against corruption. Now, uh, just from yesterday, we did see the director of public uh, prosecution, Enta Enoli, um, uh, on this issue, Mr. Milingo Lungu's case. Do you think that the fight against corruption under the European government is being as transparent as they are saying it is? You know, the fight against uh, you know, corruption in this country uh, has always been mad in uh, uh, political rhetoric um, and you know, uh, political innuendos and, and so on and mm. so forth. Uh, but the bottom line is this. Zambia has had a problem with corruption for far too long. And the reason for that is that... Um, um, you know, our governance systems have not been sufficiently transparent uh, to inspire that kind of confidence. Uh, you remember at the height of the uh, uh, privatization program and uh, what followed after that, um, there's, been a, there's been a huge outcry to this day that, uh, you know, the privatization program in this country was not done in a transparent fashion. So one of the things that we need to start doing as Zambians is to ask ourselves, what do we mean by transparency? Um, if there are some pieces of legislation that we need to interrogate mm. uh, so that, uh, you know, clearly that would indicate that this is transparency. I think uh, for me, we haven't really defined what that transparency means. And also secondly, uh, this whole business of seeing uh, institutions of uh, investigations, does the institu investigate crimes, appearing to suddenly become busy after an election, that also doesn't inspire confidence because uh, it portrays the picture that uh, these institutions are giving, are getting instructions from those in power. So a politically driven. Uh, fight against corruption doesn't inspire confidence. Remember that those that are in power um, also have self-saving um, self-saving reasons. Mm. Uh, you know, they were, in the, they were in the opposition in the past. These institutions investigated them. Now they are in power. Uh, the institutions are suddenly investigating those that uh, were investigating them before. I think Zambians must find a way of ensuring that uh, uh, the laws that protect these institutions cannot be touched by anyone who comes into power so that this narrative that um, portrays corruption as a tool to politically uh, persecute uh, somebody else, uh, you know, can become a thing of the past. Uh, but because those issues are not being dealt with, of issues of transparency, the independence of these institutions are not uh, are not that clear. That narrative will continue even if the fight is genuine.